Hey guys, Greg here with Lens Pro to Go, and today we're going to be checking out the Canon 85 f 1.4 L with IS. We're not just going to be looking at this lens today, though. We're going to be comparing it with the Canon 85 L 1.2 lens, and also what I think you might be a little more excited about, the Sigma 85 1.4 art lens to see how they stack up. This lens has pretty much been the benchmark for 85 millimeter lenses since its release, and I'll be really interested to see how the new Canon lens performs. First, let's talk about the weight and size of each of these lenses. I'm just going to put them in order from smallest to biggest. So for the smallest form factor, we have the Canon 1.2 L, then we have the new Canon 1.4 L, and then we have the Sigma art lens. But there's something interesting about these two lenses. Even though this one is slightly bigger in size, it's actually lighter in weight than the old version. This new lens comes in at about 2.1 pounds. The old one comes in about two and a quarter pounds. And then the Sigma art comes in at a whopping two and a half pounds. So between the new Canon version and the Sigma lens, it's almost half a pound of difference. Something else that's different about all three of these lenses is the filter size. The old 1.2 had a 72 millimeter front diameter, the new lens has a 77 millimeter front diameter, and the art lens has a massive 95 millimeter filter ring. So before we get into the performance testing, the only other thing I want to talk about is the minimum focus distances for all of these lenses. The old 1.2L had a 3.2 foot minimum focus distance, where the new lens, the 1.4, comes to match the Sigma art lens at 2.8 feet, which is just under six inches. I'll put two shots up on the screen right now. This first one is the old 85L 1.2 at its minimum focus distance, and this shot is the new Canon 85 1.4L at its minimum focus distance. That's just to show you the difference six inches closer can make on an 85 millimeter lens. Now let's get into the first performance test. Okay, so we're here in Lightroom, and I have a bunch of side-by-side -side shots with the 85 1.2, the new 1.4, and the Sigma art lens. Let's kick this off with a sharpness test. I'm going to try and keep the new lens always on the left side and swap between the Sigma and the 1.2 on the right. And I'll leave the information up there so you can see what lens it is. So first up, we have the 1.4 and the 1.2. Jumping into one-to-one, -one, both of these lenses are really sharp. I can see, though, that the 1.2 is a little bit softer right in the center. And if we punch into a three-to-one, that starts to become more apparent. Now let's start moving towards some of the edges. If you look at the letter written on the window right here and right in the cross parts of the window, it's almost losing all the definition on the 1.2. It just looks like solid white lines while on the 1.4, you can still see those ridges. So I'd have to give the sharpness to the 1.4 here. Let's see how it does against the Sigma. And going back into the three to one, these look very, very similar. And I don't think I'd be able to tell them apart from this. Let's see how they both handle the edges again and they look almost identical. Let's take a look at another photo. And this one's pretty interesting actually. So these were all shot at an F4 on all of the lenses and in the center they perform about the same like we just saw. But as you move towards the edges, especially down near the fence in the bottom corner, the 1.2 holds its own against both the other lenses and is definitely sharper. So take that for what it's worth. Here's one more quick example for sharpness, the 1.4 back on the left and the 1.2 on the right, and it's definitely softer in the lettering. And here it is with the Sigma, again, very comparable to the 1.4. Now let's look at chromatic aberration. The new lens has some brand new coatings that should help with this as well as flaring, which we'll take a look at in a minute. So we have the 1.2 up on the right and we're going into a one-to-one -one looking near the roof and the tractor where the dark and light areas meet. The new lens does a really good job at correcting for the aberration, but going along the roof a little more, you can start to see a huge difference between the 1.2 and the 1.4 lens. Let's swap over to the Sigma and look in the exact same spot. The Sigma is doing a really, really good job here, and even in the three to one, you can just barely start to see the difference, where the Sigma looks cleaner for sure, but to see any sort of difference, you have to go into that three to one, so I wouldn't worry about chromatic aberration too much. Let's look at another shot from where the sun is coming through the window of the tractor to see some flares. If you look towards the front of the tractor, you can see some of the reflections of the elements, and this new 85 looks very similar to the 1.2. It has similar shape and that warmer orange-yellow color, compared to the Sigma, which is a cooler blue-green color, and it's much softer and much less visible compared to both the Canons. This next thing is pretty interesting to me, and you might have already noticed it in some of these other examples, but this one shows it off a lot, and that's the exposure difference between the lenses. I'll just cycle through these three lenses so you can see this change. This is the new 85 1.4, this is the Sigma, and this is the 
you can see that huge exposure shift on the 1.2 lens. It's transmitting a lot more light than either of the other two, and if we go into the development tab and look at the histogram, you'll see it jump for the 1.2 lens, and right below it you can see all the settings so you know that they're all the same. Next up, let's look at the bokeh. First we'll do the Sigma because both of these lenses are 1.4, and from a distance they look very similar, but there is something going on with the Sigma lens. If we go into that one-to-one, -one, the Canon's bokeh looks very smooth and solid. It's not completely round, but it's definitely smooth. Looking at the Sigma, there's these concentric rings in each of the lights, and it's almost like there's more definition in it. Now switching to the 1.2 lens, but still at an f1.4, the smoothness is very similar, but the 1.2 is definitely rounder. When you open up the 1.2 lens to wide open, it adds in those points and gives it more of an oval shape. The difference between 1.2 and 1.4 is not that big of a deal. The size is very similar. These last photos are something that I can't really compare with the other two lenses, and that's the image stabilization. It's really impressive, saving up to four stops of handshake. Here's a shot that I did at one tenth of a second handheld with no IS on. Obviously, it's a little bit blurry, but when I turn that IS on and do the exact same shot, it's really sharp at one tenth of a second handheld. Now shooting at this low of a shutter speed, you can't shoot anything moving, but this is just to demonstrate how good it works and how much it will be able to help you when you're shooting at 1 60th or 1 80th of a second. Last thing to check out is the AF speed. So I put an object really close to the near focus of all the lenses and it stayed the same for each of them. And then I manually rack focus to infinity so you can see how long it would take to get back to the object and take a photo. If you've ever used the 1.2, you already know that this one's the worst of the three, but I still put it in here so you can see how much faster the new lens is. The 1.2 L lens is on top, the new 1.4 is in the middle, and the Sigma is on the bottom. I'll play it for you in real speed, and then we'll go frame by frame. Here's the real speed. The Sigma and the new 1.4 are pretty much neck and neck, and the 1.2 lags way behind like I expected. Going frame by frame from when they start to move, and we'll see that the Canon stops first, and we'll go a couple frames ahead, and then you see the Sigma stop, but the Sigma does have to readjust slightly after that, where the Canon stays locked. And then a while later, the 1.2L finally gets there. Now this isn't a crazy scientific test, but I would say that the new 1.4 and the Sigma art lens are pretty much equal on speed. And I didn't do a test of it, but from shooting with both of them, the reliability of focus, meaning that it doesn't hunt for focus, is pretty much the same as well. Hope you guys got something out of those tests, and now it comes down to deciding on which lens that you want to choose. In my opinion, the 85 1.2 is definitely out, so it's going to be between the L 1.4 and the Sigma Art lens. Now for cost, the 1.4 comes in at $1,600, and the Sigma Art comes in at $1,200, so that's a $400 difference. Now the things that the 1.4 has going for it is it has weather sealing, it has IS, and it's a little bit lighter and more travel friendly. But I'm gonna leave that up to you guys, so let me know in the comments below, do you like the Sigma Art more, or do you like the new Canon 85 1.4 L more? If you guys wanna get your hands on both of these lenses, make sure to head on over to lensprotogo.com. I'll put links to both of them in the description below so you can try them out. Also, if this video helped you out in making a decision, make sure to give it a like and subscribe for new videos every week, and I'll see you guys in the next one.